Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome, options traders. Well, recently I posted a video on head and shoulders, type of technical analysis pattern, and I received some nice feedback from some of the traders saying, hey, that was helpful. Could you talk about some of the other formations? So sure, why not? Let's talk about the next, probably most popular category, which would be flags and pennants. The flags and pennants actually occur more often than head and shoulders, but the head and shoulders are just so big and dramatic on your chart, and they're always talked about whenever they form. So that's one that traders usually hear a lot, but the ones that you will probably use more often will be flags and pennants. So what exactly are these and how do you read them? Well, remember that these types of patterns are what are called chart formations. You can think of them as pictures on your chart, so more like cloud formations. They're actual pictures that we're kind of envisioning in our mind just from the formations of the candlesticks. They are not the overlays like your Bollinger Bands or your moving averages that sit right on your candles, and they're not the lower studies like your MACD and RSI that sit below your chart. These are just kind of looking at pictures from those candles. So as I talked about in the last video, you'll see things like head and shoulders, wedges, cups and handles, and flags and pennants. Now flags and pennants are technically two different types of indicators, but they're so similar that they're almost always lumped together. Now it's important to understand that flags and pennants are continuation patterns. So unless they're failed, it's something that we are looking for the chart pattern to continue. So needless to say, you need to be on some type of a trend up or down before you can see a legitimate flag or pennant formed. So just as with the head and shoulders video, I'm going to attempt to draw these out to make it a little clearer for you to understand kind of in a perfect laboratory setting. And then we'll jump over to the Thinkorswim platform and see if we can hunt some of these down. Okay, so the first thing to remember, as I just talked about, you need to be on some type of a trend. And the longer more pronounced the trend, then the more significant the chart pattern. So for this video, I'm just going to look at an uptrend so let's say these are candles here. We've got this very long pronounced uptrend, but then we start getting into some resistance. Start bumping into areas where the stock just doesn't seem to quite get through. So this would be our area of resistance. And then we kind of break through here. And then what happens is that we start to tend to go sideways. Just a lot of trading back and forth among the traders. And you'll see those candles start to get smaller and smaller as we move through time. So this would be a pennant. And your pennants are generally symmetrical. So if we look at a trend line along the top here and along the bottom, that flag will usually kind of sit sideways like this. It's not going to be pointing up or down. Those are different formations. But a pennant is usually going to be just going straight sideways like this on your chart. So again, it's just a lot of trading consolidation period, people trading back and forth among themselves always trying to anticipate these highs and lows. Now, when you see this on a chart, this distance between where the flag first started or the pennant first started and where the resistance was is called the flagpole. Now, sometimes traders think that these need to be candles, like you got a really big spike, you know, maybe over a couple of days and that this is your flagpole. It could be, but it's not required. It's just wherever the start of the flag is, relative to the resistance point. So the reason that the flagpole is important is that we can take the same distance and measure it out here. And this is where we would expect the next level of resistance to be. So we would look for the stock to continue on and then probably start bumping into resistance. So another thing you're going to find is that the flag will usually be the halfway point. So that's why they define this first flagpole and the second as being the same heights, and then that's when you're expected to hit this next level of resistance. Okay, so now that you understand a pennant, a flag is exactly the same idea, just a little different formation. So let's say that we have this nice pronounced uptrend, and then we kind of go into some areas of resistance, having a hard time getting out of this here, but then the stock starts to make another breakout. And then what you'll see is that you'll get your stock price patterns are going to start doing this. And what you're going to find is that instead of forming a V like we saw before, 
is that it's going to be a flag. It's going to sit more inside of two parallel lines instead of that V. But it's the same idea. Normally your flags will be slightly downward sloping if you're off of an uptrend and slightly upward sloping if you're off of a downtrend. So this would be kind of a textbook perfect flag, but if it's sideways it would still count and even if it still had an upward bias it would still count. But this is what you will see most often. So how do we read it? Well we go back to the area of resistance right through here and we look at where the flag first started come down to here and that distance is that once we break through here we would expect to be the next area of resistance. So once the stock starts to break out of here we would expect it to start finding this as another resistance. So just like with pennants your flags will usually be the halfway point between the first area of resistance and the second. So now that we've covered the basics of flags and pennants let's go over to the Thinkorswim platform and take a look at some. Okay, so now we're over into the Thinkorswim platform. I'm looking at Coca-Cola, ticker KO. And if we go back to November of 2018, start of 2019, we started to get some resistance through here, got it again through here, and then through here. And then we start going on this little breakout. So this is our technical breakout right there. And then we start to go through this little consolidation period. So if you draw some trend lines through here and right there, there's your flag. So it's a little easier to see that it's fitting inside of a rectangle instead of a pennant, kind of a V-shape. But it's still the same idea. Also, as I talked about, you will usually see your flags somewhat pointing downwards if you are coming off of an uptrend if you are coming off of a downtrend, they will usually be pointing somewhat upwards, but they do not have to be. But most of the time that will be true. So you can see we got it definitely pointing down. This is a textbook perfect flag. And then once we got our technical breakout out of this flag, which would be right here, what would we expect the next level of resistance to be? Well, go back to the previous resistance, go to the start of the flag, this upper channel right here, and we're just going to measure that distance. And then we're going to apply it over here for the breakout. And we would expect that the resistance should be somewhere in this area. Now this was right before coronavirus, but you can still see it was starting to go sideways even before the news came out. And as I talked about on the whiteboard, if we look at the first area of resistance down in here, we look at the second area right there, our flag sits about halfway between them. Now let's go over to Wix.com, ticker WIX. If we go back to May of 2019, started to hit some serious resistance through here, and then we hit it again right here, and then again here even for a day, and then we got our technical breakout. And then what happened? Went through this little consolidation period. And if you draw some little trend lines through here and through here, there is your pennant. This is not the most well-defined pennant. I would like to see it a little bit longer in duration, but it's still a pennant. And once we got our technical breakout on this side of it right there, where would we expect the next level of resistance to be? Find it in the same way. Here was the first level of resistance. We go back to where the top of the pennant is. and We look at this distance. We're just gonna measure it off from the breakout right there and so it should be up in this area that we would expect that resistance to hit. So just as with flags if we look at our first area of resistance through here and our second area through here our pennant should occur about halfway between them. So I hope that helps you to understand the basics of flags and pennants and there are some other nuances to understand but hopefully that's enough to get you started if you should see one forming on your chart. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa to z.com. You can also instant message me right here in Facebook.